Today's sponsor of the Vision Quest podcast is 920 Hat Company. Leather patch hats are in, and 920 Hat Company is here to hook you up with your very own custom hat. All patches are lasered on top grade genuine leather and on popular brand hats like Richardson and FlexFit. Whether you're looking to show off your business or want a one-of-a-kind hat for yourself, 920 Hat Company can do it all. All the hats are handcrafted right in the Fox Valley, but worn across America. With over 500 hats in stock, they guarantee fast turnaround times. Honestly, Liam, you know, looking at these hats, solid, right? Yeah, they're pretty, I like them. I like that patch, that patch itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of a kind stuff. Uh, I know his name is Trevor. Uh, he does great work. He's actually gotten what? I think we got some a knit hat coming. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got that coming. So uh, we're really excited to have these guys on board as a sponsor. So uh, get uh, get down to check them out on Facebook. I believe they're on Instagram. Uh, check them out, man. They got the best hats, I think, in the Fox Valley, if not in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, get down to 920 Hat Company on social media and check them out. All right, everybody. We are back with another episode of Vision Quest Podcast. We have today a special guest, a guy I've known for a while, and honestly, I haven't. I don't get a chance to like sit down and talk with you very much, so I, I don't know a lot about you. Uh, Nazar Kuczynski. Did I say that correctly? Uh, yeah, Kuczynski. Okay. Yep. All right. Whoo. All right. There's a lot of hard ones that we have in the state here, so that's one of the ones I want to make sure you get right. So, Team Nazar. Team Nazar is your club. You've come a long way. Um, you didn't start here, but you've come a long way from, I mean, uh, from just getting here to UWO to, I see some of the, the accolades that you have, even as a, as a young, as a young man, um, winning it quite a bit. So, I mean, so how, how has everything been for you? You've been doing good. It's been going really good. Yeah. We've been uh, busy coaching. Yeah. Um, doing two locations and, uh, yep. kids are doing good. They buy in what we're doing and, uh, just getting better every day. We just got back from Tulsa. Ooh. Had a accomplishment there. You got ten All Americans, two champs, three finalists. That's awesome. So, yeah, kids did really good, and uh, a lot of them surprised me. Yeah, they surprised me. Today. <laughs> I know, I know. You have a. It doesn't matter which one you go to. You have a pretty solid group of kids, man. I mean, they, a lot of the guys that we've that we see go through your place. I mean, obviously, we've been to your your place a few times, and now it's just a little too far for us now. But I mean, heck, you come back, we're swinging right back in. But You've always had top tier guys coming in. I think it's, I think it's just natural to kind of go towards that. I mean, like I said, you look at some of the accolades you have. I mean, they're not, they're not just walking into an average room, man. So not an average kid's going to walk in there. And actually, one of, there's someone that just started with you. They came down to your Madison location the other night. Um, her and her dad, uh, Casey, is her dad. Yeah, a little girl that came down there. They've been asking me, and I was like. I'm telling you right now, just had to go because they Green Bay is too far. I said Nazar's your place. They're in Oshkosh. I said had to Nazar, <laughs> and they went there. Mm-hmm. And they, and the the girl was used to just kind of younger wrestling, but she got to see what the next level looks like. You know, she got to see those kids coming back from Tulsa, and she was just like, "Whoa, <laughs> this is what it's like." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, this is you know, this is what this will make you better." And she's just afraid of, I guess, not doing well in the room. But that's when I just told him, I was like, "But that's what it's for." That room is for not being better. It's to get better. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. So they came to you and I explained to him, you you know, just kind of who you were a little bit and at least a little bit that I know, but I don't know everything from the start. I mean, where, so you come from a little town in the Ukraine, correct? Yeah. A little town in Ukraine, not too far away from Poland, Western Ukraine, where uh, um, a lot of Ukrainian patriots live and speak Ukrainian only. And it's been like that for a while. Okay. I was there. Poland uh, and uh, so I started uh, wrestle when I was seven years old mm-hmm. uh, I would be a soccer player like every single regular kid in the street yeah I just wanted to play soccer and I show up to soccer practice and yes they told me I'm I need to come back next year yeah so my only other option in town was to wrestle <laughs> so wrestling practice and uh, got my butt whoops <laughs> quite a lot Let's stick around, and uh, now we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you really did you did you like soccer when you? Because it sounds like when you got over there that you, they kind of give you choices of like you're going to do this by a certain age, or you want to do this sport, or do this job, or whatever it is. Was that kind of the the road you were at? Was like I'm either going to do this, yeah. or I'm going to go do this. 
yeah, I mean, I would say soccer is the biggest sport in the world, you know, and Ukraine is no different. Everybody, every little kid plays soccer when they're growing up, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, pick up games all over you go. Yeah. And even with every single family event we have, like we just take off our shoes or just play, you know, whatever, just go out there, it's play right. some ball. And, and uh, so obviously I, it's what I want to do. And then watch TV, you know, all you see is soccer, you know, and <laughs> all, all out there. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I wanted. I thought it was pretty good, Yep. but um, I had a different destiny, I guess. I guess so, huh? <laughs> so when you, what was your first tournament? What was the very first tournament you remember as a youngster? So we had like a, we have 25 regions in Ukraine. Okay. And have regional tournaments kind of, kind of like stayed here. Yep. And that's the regional tournament. It was my first tournament and, uh, I lost my first match and, uh, I remember just, man, just not handling it well, crying yeah. all day. <laughs> <laughs> no like way. Toughen <laughs> up. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just hate losing yeah. all my life. We can tell. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that was the first tournament. I won the second match, but I didn't. I didn't think I allowed to wrestle third match. So I just kind of lost one, won one, and I was over. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah. So I was. I was dead in place. Mm -hmm. So and then I'm gonna show up to like two months later, and uh, I end up winning the entire thing, and that was really tough tournament. I remember like headlocked the kid with two seconds to go, and I was losing by two or three <laughs> to come back and win. I was like, I still have that on my VCR. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was always having the cameras and he was, uh, he was always around with that big video thing. Like, uh, not, not the phone right now, but thing probably weighed three, 30 pounds at least. <laughs> he like, carried that thing with him all over. He goes like bazooka. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> those are, that's <laughs> what they were. They had that big microphone on top and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, had that. And, uh, so yeah, I had a uh, pretty much all my youth matches still saved up. So that's awesome. So you had it sounds like you had a pretty good support, you know, system as far as you, you know your parents were there for you. They were walking yeah. around videotaping you. I mean, I, even when I was a kid, I don't remember too many guys walking around with those giant video cameras on their shoulders, recording their kid. That's pretty cool. Yeah, my dad was uh, he's a big fanatic of wrestling, and uh, he never wrestled himself. Yeah. Community, but he was uh going every single tour with me with that video camera that's awesome and uh most of them i remember and uh yeah and then we watched it at home when i lose i didn't like to watch it and he made me watch like see where we made like that. Yeah. so uh yeah i was right there that's pretty cool that's pretty cool so coming up in wrestling it looks like you're was your you had like five titles i think it, as a kid was a cadet yeah, so and cadet and juniors. So uh Ukrainian championships, you know, it's a, it's a big deal out there. It's not nothing like we have a hundred national tournaments called nationals in here, you know, and uh, out there a national tournament, you know, kinda like here super thirty two or for youth kids Tulsa, you know. Yeah. Like one national tournament and uh and you go there mm. and you compete. And uh I remember when I was born nineteen ninety two, there's I remember nationals was for Eight, nah, 1987 and younger so i was five years young yeah and i still have a hope maybe somehow they allow me to wrestle did they? and uh they did so i was showing up every single year 1988 just try it <laughs> yep yep 1989 i believe i they should have let me wrestle but they never did so like three years in a row they didn't let me wrestle because i was too young and then when i was 13 i moved to live with my coach to uh uh, southern Ukraine. Yep, yep. It was it Os uh, Osseo? Uh, it was in Odessa. Oh, Odessa. Odessa. I'm sorry. I got the, yeah. Yep, Odessa. Okay, yep. Yeah, Odessa. And a um, little town, Yuzhne. They have a big port, and they uh, uh, have a lot of, you know, money support system from the port. They support athletes oh. at four different. Yeah, so they support wrestling. They support, they have a basketball team. So uh, okay. Ukrainian League, kind of like League A. Uh, basketball team yeah they support ball they support volleyball and a couple more sports out there that's interesting okay yeah yeah yep so my coach he had a little bit problems with his lungs because mm. he was working all factory in western ukraine mm. all his life you know when it's pretty much half a mile underneath the ground mm -hmm. constantly that uh in the environment so mm -hmm. 
pretty much doctor told him you need to be closer to a sea, you know, and uh, fresh air and things like that. Sure. So he wanted to move to Odessa region and uh, and he talked to me because he wanted to grab me with him. Yeah. And just so I can live there with him and uh, pretty much train so we can, they have a big club. So they offer him to be a coach there as well. Nice. And uh, he wanted to bring his best kid. So he brought me and one of my buddies, Igor. Oh, nice. So both came out there and I live with him. Okay. I live five years, but you only live one year with him. Right. But yeah, we live with the, and after that, that was uh, the year when that big nationals coming up again and I should be able to wrestle already. So after training out there for like three, four months, we went to nationals with a, so birth year was 1990 and younger. I was yep. 1992. And uh, that's when I won my first nationals and 42 kilos. Nice. 40 kilos. <laughs> I think what what you probably closer to like ninety ninety five pounds or so. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're you're. It's, yeah. it's funny watching like seeing your size and just watching how Liam was. Like Liam was the same way at about that. I mean, he was he didn't grow up, like blow up until like almost his eighth grade year. You know when he really started to blow up. So it's almost like watching even looking at some of the weights that you had from before. Looking at those, I'm like, wow, he got kind of all of a sudden had this little spurt right there where he grew up. You know, got a little bigger too. So. So with your training, yeah. what you guys talk about over there, is it pretty, um, I guess, com- compared to here, obviously, I mean, is it pretty intense over there? Is it a little more laid back over there as far as how they treat the, uh, training for the kids and things like that? It's more intense out there, I would say. So uh, my schedule was uh, every single morning, my coach woke me up at like five or so. Okay. And for a run, he biked every time and I ran right next to his bike <laughs> and I uh, or a beach and then uh, from beach I just had towards one point and back did some but I never had my shoes on when I was running the beach he wanted me to like and then uh, sometimes I was like doing sprints and running and like my knees in the water yeah so it's just kind of water tread it you know? yeah it's hard it's a little harder man yeah, yeah. It's harder and then we did sprints on, on the sand wow so also training did some sprints and then we had like big hills up so I was running like sprints uphill, like ten every morning. Wow! Did some body cares. I grabbed my coach, and he was way bigger, and uh, like eighty kilos, ninety. Oh so like close. <laughs> I was a little kid. I would bring him like up the hill, falling over. Uh, <laughs> they had like bench press out their area, like for everybody. It's like chain, you know, chain bench wow, press to yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> out in the wide open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and wide open right in the beach. Have a pool of bars. Uh, have a nice uh, dips too. Some of those bars. Yeah. So yeah, lifting out there, kind of yeah. like wake to wake up, and then we had that for about hour, hour thirty, and then uh, the club take care of us and uh, made really nice meals for us for all the athletes. So I went to eat in the morning, then go to school, then uh, in the middle of school went to eat lunch out there, came back go to school again. I went to regular school, so it's no like special school or anything. Okay. Okay. Yep. And school I went to actual practice and had a practice from I don't know, two hours or so. Yeah. Hard intense practice. Maybe a little bit lift after practice. I always remember climbing the ropes, like 10, 15 ropes after every practice. Just it's what made us run sprints, work on sense in motion, things like that, and uh, then go eat and go to bed. So and that was Monday through Saturday. We had a two workouts every Monday through Saturday. So it's 12 workouts. And then Sunday we have off. It's usually how it was. You always, always got to rest on Sunday. Well, and that's so the, the one thing that I noticed too, is that your, your schedule is pretty similar to here as far as the schedule goes. I mean, there are some kids who do two practices a day, some not a lot, yeah. Yeah. but as far as like going to school, having a school practice, you're, you're kind of seeing what you see over here. It's kind of the same routine that the kids mm-hmm. have so with with yeah. that with that being said what you you were there you did you did a lot of uh I, I mean you did a lot of competing over there uh you were pretty dominant as well with uh with the time you were there you you were being coached but then what happened to get you here where, where what was the transition there yeah so uh pretty much i was i was the guy in cadet and junior level out there and uh yeah and then dad always wanted me to go outside the country he always the guy who was like see the future you know like if you be in ukraine you know you you pretty much done competing and then uh when you're a coach you're not gonna make any money here you know because there's oh sure 
pay to go to club, things like that. You know, like mm. if you're a national team coach, still like there's uh, not many opportunities out there. You know, so uh, okay. he always wanted to see, like the future. If you're gonna get a regular job, you're not gonna make any money. Yep. Like a few percent. You know, like I think uh, like looking at ukrainian statistics only like four to five percent actually have a decent amount of money they make and they made their own business and somehow like survive or their family members are politicians and they steal money from government and oh, there's wow. cheating there's a lot of corruption going on in the country so if you're a fair man and you actually want to like work hard and all that there's no opportunities to make money you have to cheat the system you have Holy to shit. this only way you can kind of make it yeah. you know so uh, my dad see that and he's like yeah you got to get out of country because uh yeah you can compete you know and then uh if you don't compete what are you going to do then right. so and uh, his uh mindset so he was uh my sister was the one who speaks a little bit of english and my dad made her to send emails to germany every single club in the united states wow uh, so she was like emailing every single wrestling club she could find on the internet. Yeah. And uh, the person who responded was uh, Larry Marchanda from Fondo. Ah, Larry. Oh. Yeah. And uh, and pretty much that's what happened. You know, I wanted, uh, I think when I was 14, 15, yeah. my, every single time you try to open the visa to go to the United States, it's cost like 200 bucks, which is for Ukraine is a it's lot. A lot because, of money, man. Uh, it's what people make in one month, pretty much. Yeah. Out there. Oof, man. So you have to put a month of hard work, you know, into it and hope it works out. So I remember my dad and I came to Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and uh, to the visa, you know, agency. Yeah. yeah. We trying to open visa and all that stuff, you know, because we knew Larry. He sent a letter in tent. Mm hmm. And uh, pretty much what happened. Uh, they said they can let me know, let me go by myself, mm -hmm. but um, they they don't want to let my dad go mm -hmm. because you know, so if yeah, so if I would have like a family out there to support me, like I can go by myself, kind of thing. So and was just, was that like and, a, was that like a governmental thing that they wouldn't let your dad come along? Like what what, what was that all about? Because I mean, you like uh, around here, they would say you need your parent. In general, there's so many people trying to flee Ukraine. Oh, so I feel uh, okay. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to open visa, especially back in the day. Right now, maybe it's a little better. Yeah. But uh, I would, yeah, how many years ago? It was almost 20 years ago. It's, yeah. it's harder to do. That. So, uh, and my dad said, no, I don't want to send you by yourself, things like that. And and my family uh, kind of known to play that green card lottery. So, like, my sister, my brother done it for a while. Would they just kind of, like, send yourself with an application? Yeah. And uh, there's... I think one person winning out of 200, so half a percent, you know, the chance to, to win it. Ouch. What happened uh, was uh, my brother and sister were losing every single year, but they tried and tried and tried again. My dad applied for first time, and uh, he got lucky, and he ended up winning it right away. Wow. So uh, he won it, I think it was like two years later. And then uh, he can bring his wife and a uh, kid, under 20 age of 21 my brother and sister are older 21 uh, but i was 16 years old so uh so i could come mm -hmm. and my dad was gonna talk me into it let's, let's come to the united states you know and two years later i got i got on a decent salary they put me they take care of me i was winning you know place the european championships yeah i feeling good i'm looking really good i like where i'm at you know i didn't want to go and my yeah. dad is just like had a serious conversation with me every single day, trying to make me come, and I didn't want to. And yeah, and he did, and whatever. And we we go on the U.S., you know. And uh, <laughs> where are we gonna go? We're gonna go to Wisconsin because we know Larry, and that's it. That's all we know. Mm -hmm. And then friend from Chicago, Michael, he lived there for like twenty years already. So yeah. first we're gonna stay a couple of days, and and then we go into Larry. Yeah, and uh, but pretty much what happened, Larry found. Larry found a high school for me to go for one year. Okay. He, he talked to one person, Mel Dov. He's the one who wanted, accepted our family, and he was a prey to Chin. Yep. That's why prey to Chin right away, and uh, it's pretty much how everything started. Yeah. So we were in Chicago. I have a good time, have big buildings, all that. Yeah, it's yeah. all like 
All new. USA stuff, awesome. Yep. Yeah. And then go to, you know, to the new high school. So then I was driving down and I just see a bunch of farm. <laughs> oh. away from Chicago. <laughs> but we ended up going to Prairie du Chien and uh man, community and just amazing. Mal was so awesome. He he helped my parents to got a job. Yep. Get a job. Got a job, you know, it's just big deal even knowing that they're not speaking any English. It's tough. They work really hard yeah. themselves. Uh and that's how everything started. Nice. So you you were like you said, you were doing well. I mean, I think it was was that two thousand eight? You won the cadet Ooh. European championships. So yeah, you were you were feeling pretty good. <laughs> You're like, man, I wanna do this. But but did that kind of fill you though once you got here and you like you you know, you got to see the you know, Chicago, the big buildings, all the all the crazy wild probably shit you hear on the radio or whatever you hear on TV. You get to see it where you kind of filled you're like, All right, this is actually pre- I wanna do this. This is cool. Did you kinda of get filled with a new energy a little bit? You're you're Absolutely. away from home. I was, I was- I had all my friends and I still talk in social media in Ukraine were so excited for me. Like yeah. it's like we're all in a big journey, you know. Let's That's let's cool. see what we can do this country kind of thing. Oh yeah. So so you get the prayer edition, you only had to do one year? Uh well I was I was there, I was sixteen years old. Yeah. I think I oh, was okay. seven yep. seventeen years. But they told me, Yeah, you gotta go one year to high school. I think I got there in March. Mm-hmm. So I already graduated from ukrainian school yes yeah i suppose you graduated in may but i have special professor coming over to uh, kind of examine me and all that stuff sure. and uh so i was uh graduated a couple months early so i can you know be no i done here and i can go there you know yeah and uh when i moved to pretty Chin in that march i didn't have to go to school all the way until next september so i was kind of okay. like thinking about like I'm I'm just pretty much done with my junior year in high school, pretty much what they told me. Like, sure. and now I can just uh, train with guys and things like that. I didn't speak anything. I didn't speak English at all. You're doing pretty I good. Remember, I remember I had idea that I can speak, but yeah, I remember first station, Mel was talking to me and I had no idea. And and then man it was gonna be tough our language barrier is huge yeah yeah yeah. well we make things so complicated with our language too with so many different words acronyms and just all kinds of crazy stuff so i'm sure it was not fun but with that being said you i mean you like you come here you're getting ready you're in a high school right now you weren't able to wrestle right away right no so i didn't be able to wrestle i think that I, I, I wrestled, I, I kind of get into right into freestyle season. Sure. Right. So I wrestle freestyle. And then uh, I think I went to first tournament to, I think Wisconsin Rapids, I believe. Okay. And there have really good kids out there in my way. I have no idea who they are, but mm-hmm. I wrestled. It was like state champion. And there's a couple other guys out there. And that was my first matches. Mm-hmm. So nobody. I was, but I, I remember I tech falling the guys and uh, I tech fall all my three guys who were like either state finals or state champions. They had really tough bracket. I 140 or 145. Yeah. And it's how everybody started talking a little bit about me. Mm-hmm. And that. You come into a state like that. Yeah. People are going to start talking just a little bit. I mean, especially when they're just like, this guy's just rolling through these guys. What's going on? <laughs> they have no idea. That's, I mean, you, you've seen now in this world that chatter just starts and it says it starts, it just starts to float across. Yeah. And, you know, and Mel got, ex- he's like, Oh wow, this kid's pretty good. Obviously. <laughs> so, and he was talking to me, Hey, you got to go to Northern Plains. And there's one kid who's triple crown champion. His name is Dylan S from Minnesota. And you had to wrestle him and <laughs> it's going to be really and all that and yeah and i got excited you know we went to northern plains and and i wrestled him in the semifinals and i tech followed him too <laughs> so, and uh yes. and then I get ready to like you know national duels and the uh, fargo kind of thing yeah yep okay yeah, and then uh i won northern plains and then we went to national duels and Oh, well, first was with state, so I won freestyle state. I didn't wrestle Greco because I didn't wrestle Greco at all. all no, I did no Greco no. at all. Freestyle and Greco is a different sport. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Maybe I didn't notice that and yeah, mentioned that earlier, but Greco, you don't see Greco guys other than the Olympic Center walking around, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I didn't wrestle Greco, and I remember wrestle freestyle. 
and we wrestled national duels. So mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm taking like 10th place or something. I went undefeated. They told me that uh, I should have wrestled David Taylor, but we never met Ohio. So it'll be a really good match. <sighs> And uh, so we both went undefeated in the bracket. And we and I kind of looked back to see how we beat guys. Yeah. And beat guys by like two, three points. I beat guys by like two, three points. Same guys. Really? You know? And, <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. But he made a world team. So he he wasn't at Fargo that year. Yep. And, uh, and then Mike Durone made me wrestle Greco. And I didn't want to. <laughs> that Mike Durone, I tell you like, what, man. Like we have a really good Greco team. This is gonna be awesome. Like you better wrestle Greco. We can place or maybe even win it. Sure. Like coach, I don't want to wrestle Greco. I don't like Greco. I want to shoot legs. I want to do my firemans. Yeah. I don't. I don't want that. <laughs> so he made me wrestle Greco, and uh, I think I wrestled two two Fargo champions in Greco. And first guy I did wrestle was a guy from Illinois. I don't know. I don't remember names anymore. Yeah. But we were back a match and uh that was the rule. When you win a period, then you have a choice. And if you can go down and defend it, you win it again. So it's like periods, you gotta win two periods out of three. Oh wow. Okay. That's different. Yeah. I made those kind of rules. So I remember the guy was pulling me around, he's pushing me through hand fighting. I just kinda hand fight my hands off, you know. Yeah. And then he got aggressive and I pushed him out. So I won the first period. <laughs> And then second period, I had my choice. It was 0-0, zero, zero, so I went down. He didn't turn me, and I won the match. <laughs> so I beat the I'm from Illinois. And it was the most boring match. That's why I didn't sure. really <laughs> laugh. I, I'm good enough to defend. There's not many throws, obviously. Like, I'm in a good position. I understand yeah. that. And and I cannot do too much, you know, in Greco either. So uh, yeah. at, at least I wasn't too aggressive a wrestler. I'm more of a kind of counterattack kind of guy. Sure. And uh, and then I wrestle, and then we wrestle in Minnesota for third place. And uh, there's another Fargo champion out there. I think his name is Fisher, Bobby Fisher, or something, something. Okay. Fisher. Yeah. Greco. And uh, Duran was like, "All right, you got to get going. If you win this match, I think if you beat Minnesota, you take take third place. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. he did all that ma matches and all that. And I was like, "All right." Yeah. So I remember I had my two on one. Like I always like to go two on one. Mm -hmm. The Ukrainian type. Yeah, I go, and then I'm hitting him with the dump, but didn't go grab the leg. I usually grab the leg, but yeah. I didn't. And uh, and then I end up pinning the guy, and I pin it. So I pin the guy oh, with nice. the two on one. And then uh, the guy get up, and his coach is like, "Leg fall, leg fall, blah blah whatever." And I was like, "What is leg fall? I have no idea. Yeah. I didn't grab his leg." Right. So they're talking about that I trip him with the leg, and maybe I did a little bit. Honestly, I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. Did they reverse it? Rap didn't see it, and he called it pen. Bingo. So, uh, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. And I, so it was my only time I wrestled Greco. I went six and all. So I keep telling everybody I'm undefeated in Greco. I'm six <laughs> and all. <laughs> World champ. World champ, baby. I'm undefeated. Champ. That's Lost right. Back. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so that's a pretty yeah. fun start. I mean, so it sounds like you were you were kind of – brought in pretty well you met some really good people within the community as far as the wrestling community and the community down there as well just in general so you got in, yeah. in touch larry got you you know he got you right away and then you got mal then you wound up at a decent school you wound up on the state team so you start kind of rolling along and and now are i know you know about over here i know it's not like you were completely uneducated about america but what, when you came over and you started going in high school, were you talking about college, like, right away when you got there to kind of figure out your future not, path? Not really. Okay. We didn't have a really clear path. I wanted uh, I wasn't even thinking college. I wanted to go to Olympic Center. That was, like, my one thing. Because I went with Mel to Olympic Center. Yep. And I did a lot. Of, the team, India, showed up there. And I wrestled oh. at bronze medal Olympics. And kind of, like, I loved it. So yeah. I, I liked to train. And uh, Slay was there, and I like to train with him yeah. and all that. So uh, I had a good time in Olympic Center. So I, so going to my senior year in high school, you know, I was kind of excited. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I just wanted to – at first, I just wanted to win state title. I never wrestled folks out before in my life. Oh, but that's just right. like Yeah. Hey, that's the thing. And uh, so what happened – well, before that, we went to Fargo, mm -hmm. and uh, – the camp and Fargo camp, I tweaked my knee really bad. 
So I remember I wrestled and it was slippery. It was a lot of people, you know, and just yeah. and that being a some bigger guys fall on my knee as I kind of slip. Mm. So I, I I I didn't like I just sit around the last three days of camp. And again, Coach Jerome was like, "Hey, like, uh, hey, we've been training all summer, all year for this. You know, far goes the tournament. You just gotta all you gotta do is weigh in. That's it." And he's always like going step by step kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I was like, how? I was like, yeah, I'm pretty close to weight, so I can weigh in. So, sure. I, and my ass that I couldn't, I could barely walk. But the three days later, after painkillers, it got a little better. Sure. But I knew their torn ACL or really bad sprained. Uh, so uh, I was there. I weighed in. I put the brace on and uh, pinned first kid in like 15, 20 seconds. Then pinned another kid. So I had like five pins in like 30 seconds. So I just get out of it right away at Fargo. <laughs> yeah. Second eight man are getting tougher so i ended up winning 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 and they kind of went to double elimination it wasn't like bracket so it's 50 kids at one side 50 kids in another okay okay like eight and all at the time like dude semi-finals yet <laughs> and they're they're like no i'm sorry i think you have two more matches you're going to go into sound so i was like this is wild this is crazy yeah wow. no shit yeah, when- and uh, all of a sudden, like they told me, all right, I'm in the semifinals now, and I wrestle against Andrew Alton. The guy is number one in the country. Okay, he's committed, state. He's a uh, he's a real deal. All that, and uh, and uh, so we had a really good match. Wrestled through. I didn't wrestle best of my potential. I know I lost first period, second period. I was winning. Yep. And then he pushed me out. Like I couldn't like push from the knee. I don't know. Yeah. I end up. Pushed me out in like three seconds to go to win second period. Oh, so I match. I end up taking third. Yep, that's that was the, that was it. That's pretty good, so man. I, that's that's a, that's a pretty yeah. good round. I mean, you're you're talking about. I mean, obviously you're coming from a different world when it comes to that sport, but you're still yeah. you're still a kid and you're wrestling other kids that are just as big. I mean, that that's pretty damn good for your first route there, you know. Yeah, so I took third at Fargo. Andrew Alton won it. We had a. Uh, Dylan Ness took like seventh place in my bracket. Okay. Chris Will Cornell, four time All American, took like fifth place in my bracket. Yep. So like we had a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of good guys out there. You did. Uh, who laid things in college. And uh so here's the high school season comes, right? Mm-hmm. They rank second in the country in one forty in folk style after Fargo. <laughs> and uh and nobody knew who I am so because not a lot of kids in Wisconsin wrestle freestyle. Right. So they look at you know rankings in the country. It's like this guy never wrestled folk style. How is he second in the country? How is you know? this guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh it's how kind of everything started and That's uh pretty cool. And then Mel was talking to me and he's like, I don't know if he's go- they're gonna let you wrestle in a high school season. Because there are WIAA rules and all that, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, "Like, yeah, what's the problem? Are we trying to?" I, I still didn't speak much. You know, I didn't understand things. Sure, yeah. Uh, I figure out why they're not letting me go, and uh, why the reason they told me that I don't have education eligibility left because I graduated from Ukrainian school. Well, yeah, because I read something too. Somewhere they had mentioned that it was because you you were considered a professional. That you were you were considered a professional athlete at the time yeah. because of the competitions you'd been through. Yeah, and that's an, and I think it's the reason number two that I made money in the past and I was uh, doing oh. you know. I don't know. Yeah. What yeah. do you do? What do you do? I was kind of been quiet in college, you know, about that. Yeah. So I didn't <laughs> let there. But it was uh, I was kind of thing, and they didn't let me wrestle, and uh, I was bombed out. And my knee was still messed up, obviously, but I would still be wrestling. Yeah. Uh, so I pretty much missed that entire season. A lot. I have a lot of offers after Fargo. Okay. Going to deep schools, like a lot of letters came in after Fargo. And then uh, one year I was pretty much out of high school. And then I wrestled in the first open tournament in freestyle. And I completely tore my ACL. Oh, no. The same one. I did really bad by turn. And then I did surgery in June. And then I was out for, I mean, long, long time, like Look. almost a year and a half, thing, you know, wow. not wrestling, all that. So obviously all those people are talking to me, kind of stopped talking to me because I'm kind of gone off the scene. Oh, really? And, and here I am, you know, with the brace, trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. 
Uh, if I go to Army or Olympic Center, you know, I need to be healthy. Yeah. My, I just turned my else, so they don't want me yet, you know. Right. And uh, Larry told me, hey, come over to Oshkosh, and uh, we're going to help you out. You know, we're going to take wow. care of you and, and get your education. We're going to help you with that. Yeah. Yep. And uh, from there. And, uh, nice. and that was the plan. Yeah. And I ended up going to Oshkosh. And, uh, God, they were amazing. You know, Larry would help me. The teammates were helping me. I yeah. have multiple who just take care of, you know, help me out with the homework because uh, I'm figuring out English slowly. You know, it's been a year and a half since I've been in the country, but still yeah. tough. And uh, they get me. The coach Stratton uh, was the Oscar's coach. He put me on a, because he's a teacher, a professor in PE, you know, oh, physical education. Yeah, yeah. They, and all the nice classes, all the, all the friends he knows, my professors, and uh, <laughs> I was pretty easy semester and all that. And then he's like, "All right, you're gonna have one tough class. You gotta study really hard." You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I go through there and nice. Yeah, so pretty much first semester went pretty good. Got all A's or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, I gotta see that the- report card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, my my knee like getting ready to go kind yeah. of thing you know i'm pretty close yeah. so a few years i'm jumping in the first competition and uh mm-hmm. and then you have like some sort of like try duel and i got two pins so awesome. rolling pretty good that's my first folk style matches and then uh, we had my first challenge was a kid from lacrosse who was returning national champion okay showed up Boshkash for a dual meet and uh, it's where it's like, all right, see if he's ready, if his knee's ready, see where he's at. Yeah. Um, I remember I got feet to back. I was <laughs> winning like nine to one, yeah. measuring the guy. And then uh, and then I got really tired. Oh, no. Right? <laughs> so I think I got like two stolen calls on me, and uh, he didn't take me down. Yeah. I think it was. Or I ended up winning that one. It's because you win so too much. That's up. why you never made out of the second period most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, uh, yeah, I ended up winning that match, and then it was in a roll, and we just went going to different tournaments and duels and all that. Yeah. So I was, uh, I don't know, something eight or nine and all. Yep. At, uh, I'm, and uh, we had the last tournament in Eclair. Yep. Right before we had tournament. So uh, I went out there and I remember that like my foots, like I was jumping a lot of rope to like work on my quick feet. Okay. Yep. And just because I, you know, my brace, I was kind of putting more pressure on the other leg. Mm-hmm. And if you do like, tons of ropes, you know, every single day, like you put too much pressure on the other leg and that like compensates all that yeah. pressure. And I remember that tournament, like, dude, my leg is kind of hurt. Like my foot just hurting. Oh no. And I was What's going on? You know, so I won first match, won second, and after each match, it gets worse and worse. And all of a sudden, like, I have a hard time putting pressure on. Oh, no. Coach Stratton was like, hey, if it'd be broken, you'd know, like, just tape it up. You think, I think you just kind of hurt him a little bit. You should be all right. And yeah. I was like, yeah, it makes sense, right? It makes sense. So I tape it up, but I cannot put any pressure anymore. And I remember my last match. I think it was maybe semifinals or something because yeah. I didn't wrestle. But it was last match, and the kid is probably ranked in the country, pretty tough kid. Yeah. And got a takedown from front headlock, and then I just kind of like hauled him off. There's not much to do. So winning three to two, and then 20 seconds ago, he went wild. They call me for stall and give him a oh. call, and we go in a. Oh, no. I was, I was like resting in one leg. Yeah. So I kind of down and I scored from front headlock to win that match. Nice. Like I couldn't get off the mat. Like I couldn't walk off the mat. And uh <laughs> and then I was like, Coach, it's really bad. Like yeah. I can walk, you know. Yeah. Because every time I wrestled was on my heel because my toe was hurting. Okay, yeah. So I was yeah. kinda and uh they did x ray, I have three broken bones in my toe. Okay. So um uh doctor didn't let me rest in Weak Nationals. They gave me a boot and I was like, Can I wrestle with the boot on? They said no you and uh, I wrestled with the boot on, all that. Oh, yeah, right. No kidding. <laughs> that was 2011 yeah. then, right? 2011, correct. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I was 12 and all in a year. I could not go to VIEC. I could not go to NCAAs. And, oh, uh, man. 
just watching and sees at home kind of thing. Just and, uh, burning, uh, I bet. Just like, God. And so that's the one question I did have. How, how are you liking folk style? Because now you're finally kind of in it. Were you, were you like, yeah, yeah, I really like this or. I hated bottom. I, I hated bottom. Yeah. I think I figured out how to like almost like reach back, you know, like Dylan Ness, go for the gator baking yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Instead of doing that, I just like come up on my feet. Yep. Just going like try and just jump in there. <laughs> Yeah, or just like moving one way to another yep, to yep. catch them. <laughs> then I just get, they want to wrestle, I just try to threaten them to throw them. If not, I just get up. So people just <laughs> let awesome. me go. You know, they just let me go. So I figured out how to get escapes that way, kind of. That was my first escape that I liked. That's awesome. Uh, but later, I, later on, I found out that if I would have 11 matches, mm-hmm. I would have eligibility for one more semester or a year. But because the last match I wrestled Broken Food was 12th match, the regular season is 36 matches that count. So one third end up being 12 matches. So if I wouldn't wrestle the last match of the Broken Food, I would have one more year of eligibility. But because I wrestled that last match, my year is gone. Oh! And uh, so that was, uh, that was tough. Oh, man. What? Yeah. See, these are the yep. little, like, you know, I understand there's some of the WIA rules, the crazy high school rules, but like some of those rules, like eligibility rules, like you, I hear a new one every time, like, cause I did this, I was ineligible because I wrestled this many times. I was, I was like, how many are there? This is kind of getting a little out of control and like what you can and can't do. Yeah. Holy cow. That's it. Do it. I mean, you killed it. Yeah. You killed yeah. it your freshman and, year, man. Well, I have four years and uh, I got to do something with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I might. My- to win nationals in folk style, I know it's going to be a challenge because I'm not great on bottom. Sure. I'm not supposed to be good on top. Um, you know, so uh, I'm really good. In pro. I got to find my, you know, yeah. just got to strategizing. I always like, I need to find a strategy plan for each match. It's, I always been that way. I never just step in the mat and rest. I just like find, you know, I'm, yeah. I want to see my game. And my game plan was going feet to backs, double leg near fall, fireman's near fall, dump near fall. Everything I do goes feet to back. And it's how I get successful because you're winning four or five zero. Yeah, right away. Makes a, <laughs> yeah. Makes a huge difference. I think I think so, I think uh, Jacob and Declan paid attention to quite a bit when we were when they were little. <laughs> to that, they did, to that feet yeah. to back, because that's like the thing yeah. they do. That's that that's the one thing and nobody can stop it either. That's the one thing is like everybody's like they do the same thing. It was like is anyone stopping it? No, they ain't stopping it. <laughs> you know, so that's perfect. Hell yeah, For right back, feet to back, right away, man. Yeah. And I always preach to little kids too, like, hey, you go and get take down to get escape. That's one point. You get feet to back, you get five or four points. It's a game changer. If you're not doing anything dumb and you're not losing that match, right? Correct. You know? <laughs> so if you start yourself like that, and yeah, and oh, Jack yeah. and Jacob, they start doing that as well. Yep. Which is real. So uh, yeah, and. Uh, then after that, I was just like, all right, I just got to win the national title. Yeah. And my sophomore year, uh, move up weight class, 157. I was 49 freshman year, 157. And, yeah, I had a pretty good year. Um, I'll say. Yeah, I had a pretty good year. I was, uh, I lost one match, and I lost to, uh, it was my only D3 loss I ever had. Okay. Uh, Orlando. Orlando Pons. I'm looking in the bracket right now. Uh, I had a crazy match in the finals. That's and, what uh, lost, here. Uh, and I won the finals 10 to 9. I had a rematch of that match. He was he's the goer. He actually I I glad that I wrestled him at our dual meet, but yeah, the backstory file in that one. So uh, I was uh, I was ranked one at a time. I think he didn't wrestle first semester, so he wrestled second semester. I figure it's all semester he got. He was senior. Sure. Really, really top guy. He he wrestled earlier that semester uh, against returning champion from Warburg. Okay. And he made eight zero. So uh, he's a uh, he's a real deal. Yeah. Uh, for, he wrestled one sixty five, but for some reason Orlando wanted to drop down to fifty seven, even though he just major number one guy in the country. Yep. Makes much sense, but he wanted to drop down. Maybe he's a little lighter. Whatever. So. Uh, so I I feel like I had nobody. I was a little banged up. I think it's kind of end of the season. I wanted to take that duel off. Okay. Um, 
uh, and then coach is telling me, it's like, hey, Orlando Ponce is coming. And if you want to have number one seed in Nationals, you got to wrestle him. And I was like, yeah, I have number one seed. <laughs> but I'm 171 right now and Oof. duels tomorrow, 57. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I like, I mean, you know, I let myself a little bit go since I knew I, this. I know I didn't go to wrestle. Sure. Yeah. But then I was like, all right, I got to make weight. I got to wrestle that guy. And the way I made weight wasn't smart. I did some sprints and treadmill for like ran like five miles, sprints, 12 miles per hour, like oh that kind of stuff. <laughs> Got all my water off the system. And uh, yeah. next day, they choose to have a duel in 157 to start. So like, I literally, <laughs> like the worst thing <laughs> oh And I was like, at least I'll have a little more time to recover. That's right, that yeah, one. you just lost all that weight. Oh. Tonight is that one, and I just caught 14 pounds. Ooh. And I was like, man, this is going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> I headlocked him. I was pinning him. I was pinning him. I think yeah. I stalked him. All it. Uh, he got out. <laughs> and, uh, and I gave all I got the first period, and then I just couldn't move my legs, couldn't move. Like, I feel like that work, that cut that I had, it was horrible. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that was a really good learning experience. Yeah. So, man, that's a lot of weight. Up, God, that was he holy up my butt. Yeah, I just couldn't move. He ended up yeah. kicking my butt, beat me by, by a lot. Something like nine to four, eight to four, something like that. Ten to four, maybe. Yeah. All of that, uh, you know, headlock to near fall. Well, especially just and running that, through almost everybody else, you know. I mean, then you got this, like you said, though. I mean, fourteen pounds in yeah. a day. Plus your legs are fried. Now your rest of your body's fried because your nutrient like depleted. You know, it's just like holy cow, man. So, so you, it was. I mean, it was. A, it's major to you. It sounds like it was. A, it was a big difference to you. But I mean, a five, five, six points. Yeah, it's a big deal. But you didn't get majored. But at the same time, though, too, like thinking about it as a dad, like okay, you cut a lot of weight and you know, all that other stuff. So just make sure that yeah. you do this thing the next time. So you said it was a good learning experience. So what do you what do you take I mean, away from that now? I mean, it, was that kind of a uh, an eye opener for you is when it comes to like weight, weight cutting. Did you learn a lot about that back home? Did they teach you that? I mean, so what was it like here with that? There's day before Wayne's was still, you know, so it's a okay. rule. So I never that deal with the same day. Gotcha. And uh, what we, we sit in sauna, we kind of like yeah. cut the and then have a good rehydration system and all that. And one hour in first duel, it's a completely different well, thing. Different, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So, so yeah, I was that should have done smarter. And if I knew early that I'm going to wrestle him, I would say I will do a better job too. But yep. uh, I said, and you know, if I would never learn from there, I don't know how would I wrestle him against and then say final match, you know? You won it, so. <laughs> yeah. And then I learned a good deal and I had a really good start in NCAA finals and was up five to zero right away off a double. Again, I was spinning him. I thought I was pinned. They didn't call it. It was close. Yeah. He got put and uh, I got another takedown. And nice. And then and then he started coming back. He's he has a for him. Yeah. He's a goer. And uh I kinda got a little too sloppy in the end, but I ended up pulling off and won that match. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. But that's a good way to end I, it off. You know, I mean that's I mean, you learned a lesson. It was just a I mean it's a literally we just had this epiphany the other week with Liam. It was it was that you know, the events matter, you you know, what's going on with the team matters, but ultimately this is all workout. <laughs> To that one point, you know, it's all work out until that end, that yep. end, that end uh, tournament or whatever it is, because that's the culmination. So it's, I think uh, I, we talk about it a lot on the show. It's really hard to get kids to realize that. I mean, obviously you coming here, especially learning a language, learning the way things work here, learning how resonant, you don't know folk style and you're, you're already killing dudes in folk style just based off of liking takedowns, you know, like you were, you didn't like the bottom, you didn't like being on top. It just was different. So you were just a takedown machine. Is that how you won a lot of your matches, just takedowns? Yeah. I remember in Nationals, there's one kid from Warburg. He ended up winning Nationals later on. Yeah. But good leg rider. And uh, and I wrestled him earlier that year, too. Yeah. And I, I, like four times in a row that year. But I could not get off the bottom. He just threw the leg in, super lanky, and, <laughs> and uh, boom, I'm stuck there. So, like. The strategy going in that match, you got to get three three takedowns at least the first period. Yeah, and and I think nationals quarterfinals, I took him down four times in the first period, caught him every single time. Take down, caught, take down, caught. So I was winning <laughs> four first period. That's the best. And then, 
spirit, he chose stop. He rode me out. Yeah. And then spirit, I just chill there, you know, just stay in good right. position, be eight to five, something like that. <laughs> so, yeah. So when when you guys went, the what was the mentality? Because we're going to touch a little bit more on your on your uh, 2013 2014. Then we're going to talk about Nazar uh nazar training center but with with the transition from here to there what was the mentality when it came to wins losses things like that when you were a kid the difference from there to here were were did they focus on you know like when you're walking away with a coach did they be like well you should have won this if you'd have done this or were they just like hey you need to do this better kind of thing what was the kind of coaching mentality there was it different than what we have here as i guess as parents Uh I remember that my coach, every time when I end up losing, I had to do something wild, like run 10 miles and then do a lot, like 50 okay. rope. So I'm thinking about my loss while I'm doing all that stuff. And I didn't lose very often as a kid, yeah. but I remember running and climbing ropes and do all this stuff when my friends are hanging out in the weekends and having a good time playing video games. Yeah. So I was like, and uh, as I did all that, I kind of think about, all right, I never want to do this again. Like I remember yeah. never going to get cradle again. Like I, I never going to put my knee closer to my head again. When I'm <laughs> God, yeah. I never going to go from front headlock. I never going to stop wrestling with five seconds to go. And I think I'm going to win, you know, and not going to leave it close to a ref. I never. So like, as I did all those really top four cows, his coaches made me do. I'll say, I'll, <laughs> As I'm running and thinking of nothing, I was like, all right, I'm never going to make the same mistake again. Yep. So uh, kind of work on those little details, you know, and make sure we're not making the same mistake again. Very true. So, uh, Very true. You had a pretty dominant was, performance when it comes to the college, you know, as far as just coming through. I mean, you won your first, the first one you were able to go to, you won it, 2012. Mm-hmm. But that was at 157, and then you went up to 165 in 2013. But then yeah, so, came back down though. So what what was going on? Weights were you just trying it out? You didn't want to do much cutting kind of thing? How was that? Uh I weighed around 165, 170, kinda, okay. you know, going into the season. Yeah. So I was always around 170 out there, maybe okay. after practice five, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, eh, maybe I don't want to cut, you know. But then as the season went down, my weight kind of went down, you know. Sure. But again, my mentality was like this guy won his NCAA title and 165, and I want to beat him from Warburg. You know, I want to challenge okay. myself. Okay. So uh, I was, uh, he he was the guy, he won a title. So I wanted to move up to wrestle him. Yeah. Uh, it was my that you know, and, and plus, I'm not going to cut weight, which is, I don't need to. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, kind of that, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. going from there. So, and I remember my, only loss was this season. I wrestled Isaac Jordan and Pointer Open in oh, the finals. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I remember I had a good match. So I, I kind of learned from at least I had one learning match from each year. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I doubled him and it was so close. He kind of pulled me away from, and that was like, I might feel a <laughs> but <laughs> get it, they didn't get it. pull yeah. through it. Then we had a crazy match. Yeah. And uh, he timed perfectly my front. I was trying to hit that uh, little knee pick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he, Dragged me at the same time was like third period. It was oh. just like he, he he timed it perfectly and he beat me like three to two. But with that takedown and, yeah. and I learned from that and uh, and I remember just some every time I took loss and made me go way harder and I just like you know realized that I gotta do more. I gotta do this and that and mm-hmm. so uh, going into that year, I lost a lot of weight later on. I remember I was probably like one 162 like walking around and it's 165 yeah and, uh and that was probably one of the toughest NCAA tournament i had my junior year sure because my f- match i had a yeah my first match i ended up wrestle some kid that i beat before but he's super defensive yeah and he just you know and yeah. uh, he just stayed and i remember i couldn't finish the takedown i just was so close every single match and he just like Always our bounce. He's always our bounce. I was like, don't only, but they never call it. Right. <laughs> I got a take on I'm winning three to two. And then 15, 20 seconds to go in the match, he went wild and I just stay in good position. Boom. They call me for stall and give him a point. Oh my God. <laughs> then we went to overtime and then overtime, same thing. I almost three times took him down. They didn't call it. And then 
he was on the shot actually first time ever in the match and somehow I sprawled out go behind got two but yeah I was I didn't get a good warm up I I can barely walk I was like that was a good pushing match I was like gonna mentally. say yeah I was like, man, 65 is not going to be as easy as I thought. <laughs> and after that, I beat another kid. It was a really close match. And yeah. and then semifinals, I got feet to back. Finally, I got my feet Here to you back. Go, so, yeah. I so I won like seven to two. And and then I was like, all right, I want to wrestle that kid in the finals, right? Mm-hmm. Because I was not on seat the entire year because he never wrestled me. Who was that? So, uh, yeah, he, uh, Landon Williams. Oh, okay. He's a coaching Warburg right now yeah yeah but he ended up losing to the kid that i beat last year so he never made it to finals oh no <laughs> so he ended up taking fourth place really and i ended up in that bracket yeah took fourth place i huh? almost sounds like he had kind of a mental mental breakdown after that kind of yeah he lost to cedric gibson for third uh, oh really that's uh, that's a that's a respectful loss third. yeah 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 so, so, so uh so leading into that, what happened after that? After that, pretty much, you know, I, I got it done in two weight classes already. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're you like, know, what do I do uh, now? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, obviously, I'm too small for 74. And my best friend, Dan Schiffer, was 74. Oh, Danny and, boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Dan Schiffer, he was two times in a row, lost in the blood round, super close matches. Yeah. And I was like, is your weight 74 you got this Landon Williams and I'm bumping up to 74 yeah <laughs> 65 anymore <laughs> so he went to and Dan's way class and and man and then had a he, he all American his senior year yeah 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 he was one second two seconds away to maybe be in the finals with Landon <sighs> he lost he was winning by one didn't have Collins for stalling and oh that was stalling but, calls he never stalls. He. Yeah, I was going to no. say, that was so the one thing I never knew about Dan was stalling, like stalling calls. No, no, no. Dan didn't stall. Dan no. Didn't, he didn't stall caution for stalling. So all he needed to do is pretty much, you know, yeah. play the system. Post, seconds. yeah. But he was going hard at the kid. He never had a break, you know. Oh, the kid man. never, all, all gas, all gas, ah, no breaks. Oh, well, Dan, he's and coached the, down in Illinois, I think, now, too. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So uh, he lost. Close semifinals ended up taking fourth, I think. Yeah. But he all American. I'm yeah. glad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, father okay. and uh, he got all Americans. Very cool. Good, good egg right got, there. But my yeah, I I was too small. I was kind of like after I think I started sixty five that year. Yeah, and then I ended up sixty fifty seven. I remember after one practice, I was like once fifty six point five. Oh really? And I was like, yeah. Out of 57. If I'm under 57 already, <laughs> right. I gotta go seven. Why would you want to do anything else? So then 2014, you wanted to, man. I mean, was there, was there, was it, was this one a challenge? Was there at least a, a guy you were looking for to be able to kind of have a, a decent, you know, not a decent match, but just something that you were looking forward to at that championship? Yeah, I feel like our goal to place high as the team, mm-hmm. you know, and we had a couple guys who almost made it. In- but only Dan and myself end up making it. Oh, really? So I end up having blood brown, and I was like, oh, it's an opportunity for us, us to score more points. Yep, yep, a lot so, more. Uh, yeah, and I, not blood brown, I mean uh, the kind of pigtail, pigtail. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, yep. So I got the pigtail match, and I won a couple more there. Uh, and Dan pin- have like two pins in that tournament. He, he's a cradle machine. Yeah, he is. <laughs> So, yeah, and uh, going to my final match, mm-hmm. coaches didn't put any pressure on me, but they know we need to tech fall or, or pin. Yeah. You know, and, and and they didn't tell me, but they're like, Nazari, opportunity to score bonus, like, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, <laughs> my last match, you know. Yep. And I was like, all right, I got to do my best trying to pin him on top. So, uh, yep. I started, I got takedown, he got escape, I got takedown again, got escape, got takedown, I was just dominating. Yeah. And the second period, I liked uh, I kind of, I liked my inside cradle. I started working a lot on inside cradle. So I cranked the chin, bumped him off, and lock it up the cradle. Yeah. Let's take him the second period. Nice. And I think and I think it's my only time I got a writing time and ever. My last match I got writing time in the pin. 
<laughs> and that was my tavern folk style. Nice. Nice. Well, that's yeah. a pretty damn good career, man, as far as collegiate goes. And I mean, you didn't stop there. You were you went to you know World Clubs Cup, you were at Pan American Championships. I mean you were you did a lot after that. You know, you didn't you didn't stop. You know, you kept you kept rolling through. So with some of those, like looking at you were in Tehran, you took sil- took silver there. You were in uh, uh, Kharkiv, you took gold. Lima was silver. Were there any like real memorable matches from uh, from those? As far as like the, uh, go ahead. Now let's see. The biggest matches that I remember was uh, when I I don't know. There's something special when I compete against Russia. I have extra motivation, yeah. and, and I was. <laughs> And Zedek, Coach Zedek loved it because uh, he's like, every time I'm in the exam, he's like, Russians already practicing. They're doing this. They're nine hours ahead of us. So, like, and I'm the same way, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was out there at yeah. home. So, yeah. Bay Schultz final, I have a world silver medalist against me in the finals with amazing gut wrench. Mm-hmm. I think he told everybody with a gut wrench going to finals. Wow. And I wrestled him in the finals, and uh, I was like, I cannot go on bottom. The dude is have unbelievable gut. Yeah. Put a good match together, good game plan, and I beat him nice. five to two, five to three. Yeah. So that was the big match. I won Dave Schultz. I won uh, yep. MVP of the tournament as well. Yep. So I was kind of Dave Schultz's mom talked to me a little bit after that and uh, gave me a award and uh, sit and talk with her a little bit. That's cool. And, uh, Talk about you know kind of similar character. She's like, give me the best compliment. She's like, you remind me of my son Dave. I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me! Like that's the biggest compliment I ever ever could ever receive. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was kind of cool and special, and uh, that is a big I, one. Yeah, because I wrestled in the tournament like four or five times. I placed maybe three, four times, but yeah. one. T- I won and it was special beating Russia in the finals. It cannot be better than that. Even better. <laughs> I can only imagine yeah. just how that felt, you know, just inside. Just oh. yeah. And then uh, another special moment when we went with Titan Mercury to World Club Cup in 2016. And it's supposed to be in Iran, but they rescheduled and made it be in Ukraine. And all my friends, family, coaches were there. Oh, nice. I, was, I didn't put the best tournament together sure i beat i beat the best ukrainian guy who actually ended up make make uh, winning bronze medal this year okay from ukraine i beat him and then i lost to another ukrainian body and then i yeah beat guy from georgia and but in the finals you know they i ran with a dream team together they had two really good russians on their team mm-hmm. and one of them uh Son of Koyev, he's uh he he wrestled Jordan probably like three times during Bros. Okay. And he always for two points. Super top kid. Yeah. He was undefeated and that duels, wow. you know. And, That's crazy. And maybe he hated me a little bit, but I was a huge because if I win, we I think we lost first three matches. Mm-hmm. And we needed a bro or something like that. Or yeah. Yeah, and to win, and uh, and I beat that guy in, in home country, you know, and he's Russian. <laughs> so, you know, so, I mean, huge. Yeah, but and that's pretty big, though, too. How how different was it, though, that you were wrestling for the U.S. in the Ukraine? Well, that, was, uh, that was pretty cool, you know. They they knew me still, you know, from uh, when I was a kid, and yeah. uh, and they supported me. I, I, that's proud cool. went a little while. You know, they uh, gave me props that's you know, cool and i won that so was really cool uh do it in ukraine and win it for my club who gave me so much side of mercury yeah man it's the best world they took care of me as soon as i went to senior level they believe in me they take care of me uh every, anything i needed all camps all tournaments wow. everything my club take care of everything that's and awesome. uh andy barth is an unbelievable person you know he's a successful businessman and but his passion from rest for wrestlers for wrestling is yeah. is huge, and uh, sure. everybody respects him so much in the wrestling community. But you know, he he's he's the one who helped Titan Mercury and help all the athletes. When I started Titan Mercury, we had ten people maybe. Yeah, and uh, yeah, a lot, like now. thirty. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you say one hundred? Do you say one hundred and thirty? 
I think it was at the time 120, 130, and then they have to start cutting a little bit. Okay. You yeah, know, yeah. Make it a, have to be out kind yeah. of thing, you that know, happens. to make it more fair. And they start paying <clears throat> uh, world team members, national team members salaries instead kind of thing to keep yep. it a little small. Yeah, stipends. Yeah. Yeah, stipends. Yeah, they yeah they did amazing. That's cool. And still do. Mercury is doing amazing. So every time I have an athlete like Kylie, you know, who ended up being really successful, made it a world team, and uh, won a world in juniors, I was like, hey, you gotta be tight, Mercury. You know, yeah. they're amazing, and uh, they're gonna treat right. So and yep. so yeah, she's so on. She's, the, she's on know. tomorrow. We got Kylie coming yeah. out tomorrow, so we'll have some good stories coming for her too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah this is good. You got to talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you get, you we're, cause now we're going to start kind of getting into the now a little bit. Cause it, you went through a quite a bit as far as uh, a 16, 17, 18 with the national, uh, the national stuff and the international stuff, but then you mm-hmm. decided to start a club. So when you were as an athlete and you, cause I mean, you have to be inspired somewhere by, you know, coaches, things like that. It was, it could be an aunt uncle too, but where did you, did you know, I guess maybe in college or was a high school, you're like, I, I would really like to coach doing this stuff. I mean, did you always kind of have a feel that that's what you were going to wind up doing no matter what? Yeah, there's a funny story. Um, back in the day, my dad wanted me to play piano. My, my, it's a little bit off topic, but no, I, no, I no. Gonna get... it's your story, man. So, uh, my brother, all my family musicians, my dad made me play piano and after school. And I was like, I found a little uh, opening. I was like, I coach asked me to go help him coaching, you know? So like, I got to go. <laughs> so I found a little bit of window and I was like, sorry, dad, I got to help coach. So like, it's, it's how I like pretty much get out of being in piano yeah. lessons, <laughs> go out there and help coach for, four hours before my own practice of course just so kind of because i absolutely hated it right and uh, that's how i started and i helped my coach starting when i was probably 10 11 12 years old just helping little kids okay and uh i fall in love with you know with coaching you have i really like to tips and do this and that and show them and if they do that too i was like that's so cool right you're talking about that you're like wow yeah and uh, my coach was uh, Leonid. He was a big role model for me. So uh, I, I always wanted to be like him, yeah. you know, and uh, why I wanted to coach. So, and it's how everything started all the, during that COVID year and all that stuff, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I'm going to compete anymore. Yeah. Or my body's getting a little banged up. Like, yeah. I have a couple of guys that I coach, one, you know, I have guys on a few guys and uh and luke macker was one of the big ones and uh, his yep. dad had the garage special for wrestling out there for him and so i started coaching in his garage him brought some kids to coach you know train with him i had alec hunter luke peters and lowell arnold and luke so i had those four guys yep. that i always coach and uh they started coming over and they brought his their own guys and all of a sudden you know more guys showed up and uh so it started as a collective yeah. almost got you had a couple guys that were just coming for some you know some private sessions or whatever and then it was just like well this guy needed a partner so he brought him then this guy needed a partner and they all just started kind of balling together yep and That's all of a sudden awesome. we had like eight ten guys and then uh and i was like man i gotta try to open the club yeah you have a go <laughs> And I think two weeks later, yeah, we had 45, 50 kids in the room in that little garage. Holy shit, Nazar. I, <laughs> I was like, because that was COVID. Yeah. So I was like, let's go anywhere. I think clubs were closed. Sure. And, you know, and kids to do something. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I had a, a lot of kids in the room. I was like, oh, man, this is this is pretty cool. That is pretty and cool. Then, Holy yeah. shit. That's I mean thank you thank you COVID I guess but like holy cow that's that's some that's word of mouth I mean if guys are coming in and you're already talking about because Meckler is what Oklahoma State now yeah, yeah so you're talking about guys that were pretty high level already in the state but I think um oh uh, who was the other one you just mentioned it was Luke and then um trying to think of the second one you mentioned what's that Alec Hunter Lowell Arnold Al- Alec Hunter Alec Hunter and Luke. Yep. 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 So I want to say that wasn't Alec Hunter a part of the Titan wrestling club that we had when they were kids? Yeah. So I used to do a Matt Rats. You know, I was a coach when I was senior in uh, college. Oh, yeah. I did Matt Rats. 
That's my old remember, club, yeah. There, there you go. I remember Kevin pulled me in the side, and he's like, hey, would you like to coach my son one-on-one? And it's how I started coaching one-on-one. I nice. Think. Okay. So yeah. that's a, I think it's interesting because I remember first kind of seeing the stuff that you had, and I, and I remembered you totally. I mean, because Liam was always down in the Titan room all the time with you guys and, and doing the Titan yeah, stuff. Yeah. So then I saw that you had this club, and then I was like, where is this? Because Liam loved practicing with you. He loved he loved being in the room. And I was like, where is this? And it turned out you were, you know, a little further away. I was like, I was like, this is gonna be trouble. We got Nazar coaching. He started in a club, and then I saw the kids that were there. I was like, oh no. <laughs> He's got like, I mean, you have guys that were there that were that were already kind of they were good, but they knew you and they started, but they knew something that other people didn't because they weren't, I mean, it wasn't uh I wouldn't say it wasn't like a big, like mad rush, but like it was all of a sudden you see these pictures, like you're talking about, and you're like, Hey, we're doing this. And then all of a sudden we're doing this. And you're like, what last week there were like five kids in there. Now there's like 25, 30 kids in this room. What's going on. And it's just been continuous ever since. And so your kids really feed off of you. I can tell because of, I, I just know just from seeing you around with Liam and even with the other little kids that you do, you do well. I mean, the kids pay attention to you and they also know that you come from a place of, uh, probably better intentions than they probably are used to as far as just coaching and putting them in the right direction, plus the knowledge that you have. So when you started seeing these kids coming in, you're just like, all right, I, I think I got something here. What what happens yeah. then? Are you are you looking for locations? Are you trying to, are you like, I want to try and keep it as small as possible and just kind of do what we can. Popularity is going to grow how it will. I mean, let's talk about, we can just say, you know, how stealth is out by him. He only allows this one group in what kind of thought process were you going through when it came to like starting a club or or anything like that? Were you worried about it? Were you like, I'm going to do this and I'm only doing this. How, how, what was your thought process in that? So, uh, I know that I had a lot of interest from up North and a lot of people are thinking like, uh, you got to come over here and all that. So I I want more kind of like, you know, I don't want to, the two locations i don't think i want to do later you never know in the future but right now yeah i want to make sure my practices and i want to keep it to two locations but quality over quantity as kind of thing that i was wanted to focus on mostly i don't want to just have you know 100 locations and you know just you know never be there kind of thing i want to keep it to your hands really on. good go from there yeah have yep. my hands on and make sure i have really good help with coaches and things like that yeah so, so we started out there in Madison and Oshkosh, I want to do a university room, but because of COVID, we could never get into it, you know, yeah. for a while. Yeah. So uh, I, I remember trying to help on- you trying to find some spots too, just because it, like you said, it was a school and there are all kinds of weird places opened up, but it doesn't mean it necessarily works for, you know, what you want to do. So yeah, I remember that for sure. Trying to, trying to just get you somewhere. Cause that, uh, we were pretty excited. <laughs> we're like, Oh man, he's yeah. coming up here. This is going to be sweet, dude. <laughs> Appreciate you for that. Yeah. Thanks for the help too. Oh yeah. But yeah, we started in Stoughton and I think we did really good in Stoughton. Started uh, yeah. just kind of growing the sport. You know, that summer when that was perfect. We had uh, a lot of improvements. I was still sort of competing, you know. I wasn't sure what I'm going to do. My body banged up and then uh, yeah. we had that uh, event. Um, um yeah, one of those events that Chicago uh, beats the streets. The da- Chicago, the Danny Bronigle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll get so Danny Bronigle. Yeah. Last, yep, and then uh, they gave me a kid to wrestle from Illinois, yep. and uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna wrestle, and uh, and I was kind of in the back of my mind, I was like, man, maybe I retire there. I don't know. We'll see. Clubs going good. Shoes in the right. middle. You never know what's gonna happen. I didn't know until it's over, but yeah, I beat guy and uh and i just took my shoes right in there and just yeah give a little speech and just say hey i was uh you know focusing on myself for 20 years and now it's time to you know actually help out there's a lot of kids you know need to help and yeah. just want to give back to community give back to kids and uh that's cool and i wasn't about you know like i feel like when I mean, you coaching it just is satisfied if not more to see the kids succeed and reach their goals yeah and i i always like I always like that a lot, you know, and, there's, uh, there's something different with that. I mean, I played soccer from four years old up until I was like 23, you know, and I, and I played, played for a long time. And, and then I got into coaching right after I was done. And I mean, I, I didn't see, I'm not like a kid person. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to handle it. Cause it's a 
20 little kids running around and they're screaming and stuff like that. But I had this one kid and I, t- I told the story before that was totally afraid of the ball. You could have just passed it on the ground and he was going to duck like you threw a grenade at him, you know, like it was the worst thing in the world. By the end of that season, that kid was looking at the ball up in the sky, getting ready to hit it with his forehead. He was in it, you know, and that was the what, what like you were just talking about. That was that one moment. I was like, this stuff is pretty sweet. <laughs> Watching these yeah. guys learn this and, and have the confidence to be able to go out and, and do the things that they thought they couldn't do and actually accomplish it. I didn't even care that he scored. I just didn't want the kid to blink, wince, or, like, run away from the ball. I just wanted him to be confident enough to just get, to take the ball and do what he needed. And he did. It was towards the end of the season. So you you had your you know minds made. You are going to you know commit yourself to the kids. And now you see yourself doing it, and now you're in it. How are you feeling about it? You loving it? I love it. I, I really love what I do every single day. wake up, and I'm just, like, excited to uh, what's next, you know? Yeah. What's next? I have all the kids you know who yep. have clear goals and mm-hmm. and i'm just like excited for next tournament i'm just fired up about it you know tulsa was big it was good we had a good success now kids are excited because some of them did great they're just hey whatever whatever i'm doing all the hard work pays off and some kids came a little short yep. they're excited to improve and work better because you know other tournaments coming up yeah so i'm pretty that i think uh i think we're building something special yeah you are. and i think kids are responding very well so uh one thing that i can that maybe separates me a little bit gives me benefit is uh, i have two different styles too you know in yeah. ukraine growing up completely different training and i'm using some of that system and uh i also like american system as well and just like collide and combine them together yeah i think it's a little weak and kids uh kind of like that as well yeah so for sure, a little kind of beneficial, you know, a little benefit, you know. Well, and you, so my- that was the big thing. I mean, that the, as far as knowing that it, not just ha- from the, from the area that you're from, but just the two different sports. I mean, you already are, are kind of a, uh, someone might argue with me, but kind of a step ahead because you like folk style. You've learned enough now to be versed in it, but you're also really, really good in freestyle. So that makes you a double threat when it comes to being able to coach a boy's room and a girl's room. You know, I mean, if we look at kind of how Kylie's uh, Kylie Welker's path or even Macy Kilty's path, how those guys, we don't have it here, you know, in high school, they're going to wrestle folk style and that's going to do them no good. When it comes to going to college, yeah. so you have that ability right there to be able to transition from one to another, whereas another place might maybe need another coach to do it if they're not confident in their freestyle. So that's that's kind of a unique situation you have. Plus, like you just said, combining the two different worlds, essentially, putting them together with the training. And that's that's a combo. I don't I mean, I don't think anybody else has. Uh, obviously, it's just you. So with that being said, I, th- I think, number one, your mentality, just listening to your mentality and how you – felt about number one what your coach would tell you after and then you would work about it you'd think about what you did wrong you try to fix that mistake it's a lot of what you try to instill the kids and even what we try to instill in Liam and stuff like that like the loss is cool just fix what happened wrong that's all you know and yeah, we, I think we talked about it yesterday I was talking to Zach and Tegan kind of talking about kids don't want to watch their losses you don't have to watch the whole you know the other kid's hand getting raised just watch the things that you did wrong you know, and help it and yeah. help it fix it. Doesn't make you a, a terrible wrestler. It just means you got to fix something, and everybody's got to fix something. You know, so yeah. Um, yeah, you guys are sailing, man. I saw some of the results from Tulsa. That was pretty good. You had you had two champs, right? Yeah, two champs. I, Brooke Brooke was one of them. I saw that, and she she was MVP too. She's she killing the, it. She fill in all the four girls. Yeah, and uh, had a little uh, little stud JV in the forty six pounds. <laughs> The kid was going for his triple crown two years in a row, and he stopped him. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, oh yeah. Kind of cool story that uh, he he see Carson Newber hit the uh, at Super Thirty Two hit Carson Newber hit that uh, chin whip. Yeah, yeah. And he's coach. I kind of like this move. I want to practice that. And he practiced a little bit here and there. You know, he liked it, and uh, he tried to do it in the semifinals at Tulsa, and uh, he failed. And Carson kind of like talk to him and just give him a couple of pointers then the that yeah and I mean, he hits and pinned the kid in the finals for that. <laughs> so, I was asking you your kids are actually helping each other like Carson just take time to talk to him like hey you got to grab uh you know armpit instead of grabbing the neck and yeah. make it tighter and this your hip a little more run and hip more you know well and, and I worked it ended up winning Tulsa because of that because like we- 
pretty special. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Pretty cool to see that. Pretty cool to be a part of that too. That's pretty. Carson Newbert's a good kid too. He's got a good support system as well. Um, so he's yeah. been. We've been around him for a while. That's uh, that's pretty special though to be able to learn that, and then you take it out in the finals match, like and then pin the kid with it. That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. Well, he's a little guy too. How much did he weigh? He it's the first time he actually ever wrestled in his weight class, forty six pounds. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy he always wrestled in five. Yeah, and uh, he hang out there. You know, he he beat some good kids out there, but it's the first time ever he actually wrestled in his own weight class. Wow, and, uh, what a difference! Uh, right on every single match, just came back, he refused to lose every single match. That's awesome. He came back. It's so yeah, we just gotta starting them young, you know, to realize that no matter what, how bad things are going, mm. you always take chances to refuse to lose and keep it going. Yeah. Things good things going. Here's a good example of it. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I've had you on here for quite a while, man. I told you to kind of keep her keep her in a time frame, and we're just on the on the cusp of it here. So, I appreciate all the time you spent with me, Nazar. It's good to get to know you a little bit more and actually know about you kind of what makes you tick because that like i said i've been around you forever and i i don't know a, a lot about you i just know that you're a really good coach and that you help liam a lot so with that being said i'll get out of your hair i'll leave you alone i'm sure you got stuff you got to take care of uh in, in refusing to lose that's a it's a great motto to have <laughs> that's that's pretty cool so congratulations on everything man i mean you've had a really great career and and laying it out like you did at the end with that with a nice win is the best way to do it right and then uh continuing that legacy on with your club it's it's really cool so i i put you up there i mean i'm sure i'm going to get other clubs mad but i just because i know you personally you hold a different place in my heart i put you as right up there as one of the top two in, in the state you know like and you're just you're just getting started dude like you're this is year four is it year three or four for you with the club year three year three and you're killing it so high five congratulations much luck to you and all the guys coming up in the future. We got what? We got uh, high school coming up pretty soon, state and everything like that coming up. So we got another wild run. So congratulations to you. Good luck. I hope everybody does well this year, and uh, we'll, we'll reach out to you soon. We want to have everybody back on. There's always stuff that happens in the future, and there's always other stuff to talk about. So thank you again, Nazar. I'm going to lead us out with uh, some music here. Let everybody else know that we're ending, because otherwise they don't know when you end. What's that? Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. not a problem, man. Not a problem. We appreciate you. And then again, just reach out anytime. If you need help with something, let me know. We got your back, man. Sounds good. All right. We'll talk to you later. All of our episodes are brought to you by Appleton Tattoo, located at 117 South Appleton Street in Appleton, Wisconsin, right off the main drag on College Avenue. You can't miss them. I've had some work done. Uh, I have a Celtic cross that covers my back that was done by Jason. We're not done yet. Uh, Jason Winans and crew, uh, the artists that he have there, those guys are the best in the Fox Valley. Um, they are definitely one to go to. If it's something that you've just been kind of throwing around, they'll make you feel comfortable. It's a very clean environment, very nice crew, um, and very willing to get done whatever you need done when you need it done. Um, you can message them on Facebook. I know they're on Facebook. You can give them a call. Uh, at 920-604-8289 and get in touch with Jason Winans and crew at Appleton Tattoo located again in Appleton, Wisconsin at 117 South Appleton Street right in Appleton. Very flexible hours, great crew, clean environment again. Uh, I would not send you anywhere else except for these guys. Appleton Tattoo.